are back at the DJ Sokol Arena for our final game of day two action here at the NAIA opening round. And the March Madness continues for one final game. We have Bethel and Providence squaring off for a spot in Kansas City in the round of 16. Oh, and we obviously have two really good teams. Providence had a near flawless season, 17 and two overall, and they have one of the best players in the NAI, but on the opposing side for Bethel, they also have one of the best players in the NAI. We have a matchup in front of us. What are some of the things you're looking at for this last game of our two-day stretch? Well, obviously both teams very talented, very, very stacked team, and obviously two very competitive teams that we're about to see face off here today in the last round of, I guess, Round of 32 would this be to go on to the round of 16 here in Omaha? However, I hate to boil it down to this simple, but I will boil it down to this simple. It is who is going to win the duel between Darko Kelly and Javion Cruz. Those two guys are going to be the difference between who goes on to Kansas City. Zacchaeus Darko Kelly, fourth in the nation when it comes to free throw percentage, averaging 18 Point three nine points per game. His opposition, Travion Cruz, ranks number one in Division One in total three-point field goals made at 104. He is averaging 24.33 points per game at 46, 48 percent. Excuse me, from the floor. Those two guys obviously are the ones to look at. But we saw this team last night in Bethel. They struggled at times against Texas a and Texarkana. So you know they can be got at. Yeah, and then looking at, like you said, Zacchaeus Darko Kelly for the opposition that we haven't seen in Omaha Providence. Two-time Frontier Player of the Year. Just recently selected again. First team All-Frontier again this season. He's a Montana Western transfer. That's another team in the Frontier Conference. He had 37 points against his former team earlier this year. He takes down names. And he's one of those guys that will put you to bed. And he is ready to put Bethel to bed tonight. But in the meantime, we almost have starting lineups here. Owen, any quick last-second thoughts before we hear the starters for tonight's game? Yeah, I think in the last couple of days, it's been really decided, uh, these games, between who has dominated the boards and dominated the paints. I want to see lights out shooting. I want, by the end of this game, no lights to be left in this arena to be shot. Every single time, I want somebody pulling up for a tray. And we have a fantastic game in front of us. We will now take it down to the floor to hear the starters for tonight's game. set to go here at the DJ Sokol Arena here in Omaha, Nebraska for our final game of the day. It's Providence and Bethel. Bethel had a nice performance yesterday, as Owen mentioned earlier, against Texas A&M, Texarkana. 
And it was Nathan Ertz and Wesley Burst leading the way, both with 18 points. Travion Cruz held the 13 in that one. And it's funny because 13 points sounds like a good day, but for his 24 points per game season average, it did not live up to expectations. He looks to come back tonight and try to put on a beggar show and potentially send his team on to Kansas City for the round of 16. But Providence, their first time playing in Omaha, trying to send their team to Kansas City behind the play of Zacchaeus Darko Kelly. It's going to be a matchup between two of the NAIA's best. And two of the NAIA's best unis we have seen thus far. The Argos with the all-white and don't know what shade of green it is. It's almost like a mint, mint army green mix between the two. And then the black and silver of Bethel. Oh, these are two beautiful unis going up against each other. And Taking my job as color commentator a bit too seriously. And a steal there from Jared DeHart. He had a great game yesterday looking to pick up where he left off. Gets a screen here early on. Ball's going to move around. It's going to be Ertz. Hands it off to DeHart. Nice defense here from Providence. Shot no good. Offensive rebound. Three on the way. That one also no good. Fight for the ball is going to be one, but a foul on the floor. Oh, excuse me. They're going to call a travel. Possession stays here with Bethel. Nice job early on. Getting another chance at it from the Providence mistake. Yeah, this is a high-intensity game early on here. Not sure how long they're going to be able to keep this level of intensity before fatigue starts to set in. Ball's going to be inbounded to the safety. A little bit of pressure, but Burst comes up with it. Air, it's into the corner. DeHart pump fakes, dribbles towards the middle. Pull-up jumper, no good. Good look there for DeHart. Just couldn't get it to fall. Now here we go the other way. It's Marcus Stevens. The Frontier Newcomer of the Year. He's going to take a three. That one off. It's going to be Janai Griffith, the UK native, coming up with the rebound. DeHart, cross-court pass to Burse. Ball moves. Now it tries to go inside, but there's the big fella coming up with the steal. That's Jackson Hashley. Excuse me, Jackson Hashley, the 6'7 junior forward. Kalispell, Montana. And there he goes, getting the bucket to go in the first of the game. Providence on the board, thanks to Jackson Ashley. Big man coming through the paint, coming up big and getting the first points on the board today. And he's a second team all-conference selection. They kind of tore apart the awards page for this particular conference, the front deer. That shot way off the mark. Here comes Fowler back the other way. Ball's going to move around here a bit. The conference player of the year, Darko Kelly, gets it into the big fella. Ashley goes to work. Layup off the mark. Nice defense from Janai Griffith, and then the foul. Ashley's got to know when to relax on that play. If you miss the shot, if you're not in position for that offensive rebound, don't get the dumb foul. No, absolutely. It's just a silly mistake to, A, chalk up a foul on the column early on. You're only two minutes into the game. We saw how much fo early foul trouble can affect you throughout the game earlier this tournament. And Hashley's 28th in the NAI in offensive rebounds per game, so you can tell why he wanted to go up for that. He's known for being able to crash the glass well. Cruz kicks it up top to Burst. Burst out to DeHart, now quick pass to Ertz. Ertz drives in, 10 on the shot clock and a block. I believe he was going up with it, so it's gonna be two shots here for Nathan Ertz. Already two fouls, though, on a ha Hashley. So we're definitely going to see Jackson Hashley head over to the bench. And he's somebody this team counts on. He's the second leading rebounder behind Darko Kelly. Four of the last five games, he's been in double figures. Ertz gets the free throw to go, and Hashley will take a seat. Probably won't see him at least until the later portion of the half, maybe not even until after halftime. Meanwhile, Ertz at the free throw line makes the first 14 points a game, six rebounds, and he was honorable mention all-conference. Shows how stacked the Crossroads League is. Gets both to go this game, tied at two. Bethel had a nice win last night against Texas A&M. Texarkana, three on the way here. That one off the mark. But there's Darko Kelly. Zacchaeus Darko Kelly is one of the best rebounders in the NAI, and he hits one with a hand in his face. 14 games in a row, he's been in double figures. Kicks it out, it's gonna be Ertz again. That one off the mark, Burst with the offensive rebound. 
DeHart almost had a crack at it from deep. Ball's gonna move a bit. They're looking to get it to Janai inside. They gotta move around here, 10 on the shot clock. They're gonna need to get something here. They go to their leader, Cruz. Cruz is gonna take one with a hand in the face. He misses off the back iron. Now here's Fowler. Grabs the rebound, they're gonna slow things down. Uzan missed a three on the last possession. Uzan gets in there, this time gets the layup, flushes out. DeHart's able to tip it out and grab the rebound. Unfortunate miss there for the 5'11 junior guard from Las Vegas. Burst with the slip, they find him on the slip, layup up, no good. Offensive rebound from Griffith. That one also no good, still fight for the ball. It's gonna be won by Darko Kelly. Throws it up in transition, that one gonna sail out of bounds, a potential save from Stevens, and that one will unfortunately go out, but what an effort from Stevens and Fowler to try to make a play on that. Yeah, I haven't seen anybody lay out to try to keep a ball alive like that since probably the last time I went to a UNO volleyball game. And you're out here with the jokes today, aren't you? That's not a joke, Claire Mountjoy is a very good libero. She is, and the UNO volleyball team definitely having a good season so far as well. But now back to the game, Cruz. Still pretty quiet so far early in this one. Four minutes in, 5-2 Providence on top. Cruz being guarded closely here by Uzan. Now they get it to the big fella. Griffith kicks it out to Ertz. Not a lot of ball movement, but a lot of movement off the ball. Ball back inside to Griffith. Griffith, tough little floater inside. That one no good. There's Darko Kelly again and the foul. I believe that's going to go against... Burst. It's going to be Burst's first foul of the evening. Providence up 5 2 early on. Zacchaeus Darko Kelly. The man a lot of people are watching for as this is his first game here in Omaha. Three points, three rebounds early on. Got some special guests up in the crowd making their way back in the locker room. The Providence women's basketball team fresh off of their disappointing but hard fought loss in the last round. Now Capuzon tries to get in there. Nice fake. Gets him in the air, but a foul going to be called on Griffith. Got his hands in there. Looked to have stolen it away, but maybe a little bit of contact in there as well. Yeah, there was a little bit of contact there. The referee was sighted by the back of the player, so I can understand why he might have called that and not been able to see much contact. Might have just heard more than anything else. Griffith will head to the bench after that foul. And Bethel struggling from the floor right now. 0 for 9 to start the game. There are two points coming from the stripe. Now they have to get a stop. Darko Kelly comes up and sets a cross screen. They're trying to get him open. Now a quick three on the way from Muzan. Almost banked it off the side of the backboard from the corner. And now here we come the other way. Granville gets it out to Hart. Wide open three. Yes! Jared DeHart, the three-point specialist, 42% from three on the season, gets that one to go. About time they got the lid off the rim, Bethel, and it might be the first of many. Dawson tries to turn the corner. He pulls up, and a foul, and one finish from Dawson Fowler. The six-foot red shirt sophomore from Belgrade, Montana. 43% three-point shooter, 16 of 37 on the season. His last time in double figures was back on February 20th against Rocky Mountain College. Hits the free throw there. Nice three-point play, extends the lead back up to three after the DeHart three on the other end. Cruz is gonna get him started. And he drives in, kicks it out. Ertz was trying to make a play, now opposite corner, Cruz working. Back to Ertz, going one-on-one. -on -one. Tried to go up and under. Tough, tough look, no good. Darko Kelly. Bounce pass inside, pump fake. Easy bucket inside, but can't get it to go. The bunny, no good from Jake Olsen. And that's a big one in a game like this where you can tell it's probably going to come down to the wire. Block on the other end, and it's Olsen again. Olsen looked like he was in solid position. It was a nice defensive play, but the refs... Do not feel the same. He was in the right position. His foot just, I, I don't think it was quite set. It was getting there. It was very close, I think, by a minimal fraction. He was called for the block there instead of the charge. What an effort, but it's recovered by Bethel Granville with a nice recovery. Now on the left wing, it's DeHart. Trying to get it inside here. Nick Pluta comes up and sets a screen. Nice defense here from Providence. They're making things difficult for Bethel. Still only one for 10 from the floor. 
can't get that one to go. Cruz had a relatively quiet night last night, just 13 points. Here comes Zacchaeus, Darko Kelly almost turns it over now, here's Fowler. He's gonna reset here, 16 on the shot clock. Uzan drives, gets around Granville and gets the left-handed floater to go. Kept it high so it couldn't get blocked and gets the finish down the bottom of the net. Cruz, now Ertz to Hart. Has the lone field goal in this game and it was a three. Ertz trying to look inside, they throw it over the top to Pluta. Pump fake, goes up, foul, can't get it to go but will get two free throws. Nice patience to get his defender off the air. You gotta finish those easy ones. Yeah, absolutely. It looked like Fowler was the one. Yeah, Fowler getting called for that. As the block came in from behind. Olsen got all ball. It was a clean strip on the shot. Just a few seconds, maybe even a half a second before that, Fowler had gotten a lot of the man. First free throw good from Pluta. On the season, just a 62% free throw shooter. He's been a good impact, was injured briefly in yesterday's game, but provided good minutes, especially when we saw Janine Griffith in foul trouble. Hits the free throw there to bring it back within a possession. 10-7, the one seed Providence on top. They watched the women's team lose earlier today. Now they're trying to get a little bit of redemption and get a win here in Omaha. Uzan hands it off. And a foul on the floor as Davian Harris-Williams was driving in the lane. Harris-Williams, the co-sixth man of the year in their conference. Had a really, really nice season. As we see another sub come into the game. 10.4 points a game for Harris-Williams. A very good three-point shooter. Over half of his shots this season have been from behind the arc. Uzan's gonna hand it off here to Harris Williams. Goes one-on-one, -on -one, gets all the way to the hoop. Pretty finish inside. Collides hard into the backstop behind the hoop, but the big fella gets in there and gets the nice finish. Yeah, and there should have been an and one call there. It's, looks like the bench agreeing with me on that one. There was a lot of contact. Nice defense here from Providence. They're making things hard for Bethel. Granville gets tipped, poked out, recovers. Now it's going to be a wide open burst. Three, and he gets it to go. And we're going to get a timeout here, and it's going to be a 30-second one. Burst with the big bomb to send us into a timeout. He had 18 points yesterday. He was a big factor. So far, Bethel just trying to get comfortable. Just two of 13 from the floor, but they're still trailing by two. So right now, if you're in the huddle, the vibe doesn't have to be necessarily down. You're kind of in a situation where you're going, we're fine, we're right in this game. Yeah, you're still in it even though you're shooting 15% from the floor and 28% from three. There's still plenty of time left in this game. We're not even a quarter of the way through it. You just gotta ride this wave of not hitting the shots that you should be hitting because they will find, basketball oh, is a game of runs. Eventually you will get hot and get on a good run. You still just gotta be in it. And that's what they're trying to do here is just stay within striking distance. Has to make a team feel good when they're not playing their best and they still are in it to win it. Now Providence out of this timeout is going to bring it up. It's going to be Uzan. Uzan has had a good season this year. The junior from Las Vegas. 11 points a game and now a three from Harris Williams. That one off the mark. But an offensive rebound, and who else but Darko Kelly, the 6'6 senior forward from Great Falls, Montana, gets the bucket to go. Five points for him to go with five rebounds, and we still have 12 minutes left in just the opening half. Cruz gets a screen from Pluta. They look inside, good help side defense there to avoid the entry pass. Out to the wing. Reese Green can't get much to go. Excuse me, that was Trent Edwards. Now a turnaround fade away. That one misses short. Look to be on line. Harris Williams up to Darko Kelly. Wide open up the floor. Easy bucket for Jake Olsen. His first field goal of the game. Now a six point Providence lead out of the timeout. Now if you're Bethel, you need to start tightening the screws a bit. Yeah, you need to start showing out defensively, get a stop or two, but more importantly, you need to capitalize if you do get a stop. You need to start getting points. 
Kick out to Edwards. Burst again from three. Off the back iron. And the rebound to Darko Kelly. Six rebounds now already. And here's Harris Williams, a bomb from downtown. That one no good. That one's going to be last touched off of Granville. Possession stays here with Providence. And Janai Griffith back in the game. The big man has had a big impact in the two games in Omaha so far. Harris Williams going to inbound. 39% three-point shooter on the year. 0 for 2 on the game. Had 31 points on 10 of 11 against Rocky Mountain College back in January. Foul on the floor. That's going to go against Travion Cruz. Cruz experiencing a bit of frustration early on. 0 for 4 from the floor. Hasn't had a point yet and picks up his first foul of the game right there. Harris Williams going to inbound again, this time from the other side. Zacchaeus Darko Kelly going up against Ertz. That three no good. Ertz recovers. Cruz coming back the other way. Needs to get going. Had 13 yesterday. Kind of an off day right now. No points so far. Edwards. Gets past the defender. Floater in the lane, no good. Shots just not falling for Bethel right now. Two of 16 out of the gates in this one. Inside to Olsen and a foul on the floor going against Burst. And I'm not so sure about that one. When he comes down the lane and sets up right there against Burst, there's not much Burst can do besides try to hold his ground. No, absolutely. I, I don't think that's a foul. I think it's just coming together from two guys down in the paint. It's good, clean, family, fun basketball. Burst showing a little bit of frustration from that. That's going to be his first foul. Inbounded into Darko Kelly. Hands off to Harris Williams. He's looking to go one-on-one -on -one against Burst. Nice pump fake to get Burst in the air. And Harris Williams off to a great start. Four points for him. There's a reason he's the sixth man of the year inside of their conference. And on the other end, there's a big one. And that may just be the spark that Travion Cruz needs to get going. An and one chance for a three-point play. Yeah, and then he makes this a five-point game if he sinks it from the charity stripe. And that's a big response after the Harris Williams bucket. Nice finesse on that last play. Has had a good start in this one, but now it's Cruz. Just one of five with that last bucket, but a chance to maybe start a run. Free throw good. Now back to a five-point game. 10.30 left in the first half. Now Romeo Parker into the game for Bethel. The first time he's appeared in Omaha. And now quick three. No passes. Doesn't need a Marcus Stevens. The transfer from Sheridan Community College was the Frontier Newcomer of the Year this year, as well as a first-team all-conference selection. And he gets that one to go there for his first bucket of the game on the ensuing possession. No good. Here comes Darko Kelly. Inside. Layup. Yes! Rasheed Stocks gets that one to go. Largest lead of the game. Bethel now with a little bit of sweat dripping down their foreheads. Especially with that miss there. Possession going the other way. They have to find some sort of way to get a spark. I thought that and one from Cruz might have been it. But right now still struggles, especially on the defensive end. Yeah, it has been all organized. They're just finding a way to pick through the defense of the Pilots. And there doesn't really seem to be a whole lot that Bethel can do to stop it. And a nice defensive stop. That's what they may need right there. Marcus Stevens got in there. It was a deflection that ended up going off of Stevens. 10-point game, plenty of time left in the first half. 9.38. DeHart back into the game. Looking to make something happen here for the Pilots. DeHart catches in the corner. Screen from Griffith. Tries to turn the corner. It's Parker. Quick ping pass, DeHart. Now they're starting to move it a lot. They try to throw it over the top. That's going to be tipped and stolen. Back into the game is Jackson Hashley with two fouls. Comes up and sets a screen. Here's the three off the front iron. And then almost turns it over on the other end. Travion Cruz looking to get something going. And play is stopped momentarily. What 
been an incredible swat. That hadn't been called as an intense block went through in the paint. Well, it was called for the foul a few moments before, so I think that was just what left it to be quite the easy swap. But right now, Bethel just has no answers so far. Ten points down with less than ten to go in the first. Three of 19 from the floor. They just cannot get the left of the basket. Griffith was open backside. They're not really looking at him. Now DeHart drives. Kicks it opposite. Here's Burse. Nice defense from Hashley to stop the drive. Now out to Burse. He's going to get an open three look. Can he hit? No. That one misses short. Now transition. Burse able to get a hand on it. Now Cruz comes up with it. Nice heads up play there from Burse. On the other possession. That one no good. Ayrts trying to fight for it, recovered by Hashley, handed off to Darko Kelly. The other way, nice pump fake from Harris Williams, but DeHart not falling for it. 8-18 left in the first half, still a 10-point advantage for the Argonauts. Marcus Stevens, hands off, Dawson Fowler, pump fakes, gets burst in the air. Pump fakes again. Now Stevens looking to go to work. Questionable screen there from Hashley, comes and sets another one. Now from Stevens with three on the shot clock, no good. And there's Darko Kelly again. He's already got nine rebounds in this one. Pump fake drive gets Janai Griffith off the play. Nice save from Fowler. It's still going to result in a turnover. Cruz, transition opportunity, three on one. Gets it to Griffith, slams it home. And we're going to get a timeout from Providence. Their head coach not happy with that one. And it's going to be a 30-second timeout. We'll stay here, 7.42 to go. Griffith with a nice exclamation point going into that timeout, but still work to be done. Three of 21 from the floor. Bethel cannot get the lid off the rim. But Owen, they're down by eight points. This is still a game. I don't know how it's still a game with shooting as poor as it is for Bethel. I haven't seen a team shooting the teens in a long time. It's been abysmal. But they're still in it. They're right there it's still a game four of 22 after they update the stats from the last griffith dunk and if you're providence you've got to be frustrated this team is shooting 18 percent from both the field and the floor as we get the stats updated here up in the broadcast booth if you're providence you should be burying this right now if this turns into a close game the pilots a are going to thank their lucky stars and the argonauts are going to be kicking themselves and let's see what Marcus Stevens can get brewing here on this offensive possession for the Argos. Dawson Fowler now into Zacchaeus Darko Kelly. Has already had a great game. That one good. Seven points, nine rebounds, two assists. And we are just past the eight-minute mark here in the first half. Nice job by Cruz. Blows by. Can't get the layup to go. Coming back the other way is Darko Kelly again. Wasting no time. Eurostep. Layup. No good. Loose ball. And it's going to be recovered. Now a two-on-one. Cruz with it. Layup. Yes. Makes up for the last one. Wanted the foul. I think his head got hit on that layup attempt. But brings him back within eight. Cruz now with five points in the game. What a first half it's been for Zacchaeus Darko Kelly. He has been phenomenal on both sides of the court so far. And here he goes evening. to work again. There's the jumper. He's got nine points and ten rebounds, Owen. He is one point away from a double-double. In the first have, half. We have 6.30 to play here in the opening frame. Drive here. Ertz, pump fake, gets him in the air and gets the foul. Jackson Ashley, that's three fouls, and the Providence coach livid. He yeah. is furious right now. Yeah, you've got to be smarter than that. Jackson Ashley has had an excellent season so far for this team. Second team all-conference selection will for sure be on the bench for the rest of the half and probably even into the second. First free throw good from Aird Sub coming into the game. Tough situation for Ashley, but the team rides on. Nine-point advantage after the Aird's free throw. Aird's lines up for a second one as Jake Olson comes back into the game for Hashley. Back to eight, despite the struggles we've seen from the Pilots early on. Uzan gets us started. Gets it to Stevens. Stevens in to Darko Kelly. Tries to go underneath, nice kick out to Fowler. Darko Kelly motioning to his team. 
Trying to make a move here. Goes up. Now a fadeaway and that one off the mark. And a foul called the Bethel sideline. Starting to get a little pumped up here. And you like to see that energy. It's contagious, especially in a game like that where you're not doing well. If the bench starts getting into it, the players start to focus up and they get into it. Yeah, and it's their job at the moment to get the team back into it because there's hardly a crowd here tonight and there's hardly a Bethel contingent in what little attendance we have at tonight's game. So the bench is going to essentially be the student section and be the home crowd trying to get your team fired back up and trying to get your team back into this game. Obviously, the attendance capped here at the DJ Sokol Arena in Omaha, Nebraska due to COVID protocols. But as Owen said, the crowd here leaning towards black and less blue and green. Free throw good there. Ertz starting to get hot from the stripe. He's now 5 of 5 from the stripe. That's where all five of his points reside. As a team, a perfect 7 of 7. That one good. Now down to six. Providence has played a great half so far, led by the nine points and 10 rebounds of Darko Kelly. He catches on the left wing, looking to turn the corner. Inside to Olsen, now he goes to work on burst. Left-handed floater inside, way off the mark, but he cleans up, gets his own rebound, misses again. A lot of contact on Cruz, but they recover, so play on. Over to DeHart. Gets it inside and Granville slips in underneath the defense. Olsen now trying to communicate with his team. Just a little bit of a lapse by the Argos. Now it's a four point game. Yeah, two possessions and Providence have got to be disappointed with themselves for not putting more of a distance between the two teams and not quite the double double for Darko Kelly. And here comes the energy from the sideline again. That jumper no good, Cruz for three. That one short, but there's Granville, pokes it out, now a fight for the ball. And there's gonna be a shove, I believe a foul's called. No, they're gonna give possession to the Argos. Thought there might have been a shove at the end of the play, but advantage, Providence. 27-23, 5 -0 -3 left in the opening half. Despite the shooting performance we've seen from Bethel, they have hung around, they are in this game. And part of that's due to the free throw line. Nine for nine as a team. They've taken advantage of every opportunity as well as only two team turnovers to Providence's five. They've done a good job taking care of the basketball. Harris Williams comes off a screen. Floater in the lane. A lot of contact in the back of the rim. Serves as a friendly friend. Gets that one to fall. Harris Williams off to a great start. Six points early on. He's a big six foot guard from Tacoma, Washington. Ertz. Working here on Darko Kelly, gets double team. Granville tries to drive it on Olsen, burst recovers. Now he's doubled. Cruz, tough jumper, yes. 4.30 left in the half, the game back to four with the Cruz jumper, and he's got seven. And now a quick three on the other end, that one misses. she Stocks with a lone two points, now one of two from the floor. Looking to try to get involved offensively. Here's Cruz, a tough three. Off the back iron and off the backboard, no good. Thought that floater might come down from the brim and maybe fall in. Harris Williams going to work, pull up three, yes! Davey and Harris Williams with his first three of the game. He's got a team high nine points. Has no starts on the season, but makes an impact every night on the floor. Granville with a nice step back, spinning Olsen in a circle. The spin cycle, and he gets the three. Whoa, boy, we are being treated to some, well, from the shooting perspective, not mind-blowing basketball, but some pretty basketball. And competitive basketball, to say the least. Darko Kelly's pass bounces off the side of the backboard, and here's Cruz, three on two. Gets it off to Burst. Burst goes up, fouled on the play by Stocks. Despite the half, we've seen just 25% from the floor for the Pilots. Here they are with a chance to fly back in this game. Yeah, that was a, unfortunately a necessary foul for Stock to take there. Make them work for the points. Absolutely, his burst just one for five on the game, hit a three early on. We mentioned it before, but had 18 points in last night's win over Texas A&M, Texarkana. Gets the first free throw to go. We have a one possession game. Jake Olson comes out of the game and J.F. Dajo into the game for his first appearance. 
Burse looking to make it two for two from the stripe. That one off the back iron, no good. He's only going to get one. Brings it to a one possession game. Zacchaeus Darko Kelly, one of the best players in the NAI. Gives it off to Harris Williams. Davian Harris Williams already with nine. Gives it off to the other player with nine. Drive here from Harris Williams. Tough look, no good. Rebound here from Daho. Pass right back inside to Daho. Jumper up, no good. Ertz collects the rebound. DeHart bringing it up the floor. He's got just three points in this one. One of five from the floor as well. Can he knock that one? That one off the mark. Jared DeHart, one of those guys where he goes where the team goes. When he plays well, the rest of his team usually does as well. And here's a three ball way off the mark from Darko Kelly. Travion Cruz going to slowly bring things up. He's going to be guarded by Uzan. 2.28 left in the opening half. Bethel within a bucket. Trying to work here on Harris Williams. Trying to create a little bit of an ISO. Over to Granville, into the block to Ertz, who's going to work on Uzan. Spin move. Goes up, and I think they're going to, yes, give him a jump ball. Possession's going to, I believe, stay here. And even if it does, and it will, still a nice defensive play there from the Argonauts. Yeah, especially with only eight seconds left on the shot clock. Can't really give them too much time to reset here. They're going to inbound it underneath. As Owen said, eight on the shot clock. They're going to have two players on each elbow. Cruz and DeHart behind. Ertz and Griffith in front. It's going to be Burst inbounding. Stocks comes out of the game. Marcus Stevens back in for the Argos. They get it to DeHart. Thought about it. Now into the corner. Burst with two on the shot clock. Tough shot from Ertz. But a nice offensive rebound and a foul. Nice job from the Stoke native. Gets the offensive rebound and cleans it up for the bucket. They're arguing for Providence that that didn't hit the backboard. I didn't see it touch the backboard to get the shot clock off. And it's got to touch the rim. And they do call a shot clock violation. It looked like they ruled that it didn't touch the rim. Good eye there by Owen. I wasn't sure why they were talking about it, but that is a nice call there. Either way, Griffith with a nice play inside before that was negated. Yeah, absolutely. Jani Griffith is a very talented player using his size, using his speed and his ability to get up for that one. But, you know, can't, can't really argue with the officials on that one. That was an easy call. And Ertz, talking to the official for a second, he thought there was a lot of contact on that last play. And I thought there might have been a decent amount as well. I wasn't sure how much there truly was and how much of it was a bit of an Oscars acting job. But we have two minutes. Left at the first half, still a one possession game. Bethel, 26% from the floor. Providence, 40. Uzan goes up, gets it over the top. Griffith was defending that rim with his life. He got up there, probably a solid, probably half foot to a foot, his hand over the rim. Uzan over the top, gets it to go. Now DeHart, down five. Gets to Ertz, drives in, puts his shoulder down. Layup, no good. Fight for the board, it's still loose. And jump ball ruled. Possession's going to go the other way to the Argos. A chance with a minute 32 to extend on their lead. 32, excuse me, 34 29. 132 left in the half. Fife Granville comes into the game, and Wesley Burst will take a seat. Providence could use a bucket here before the half to build some momentum. Their first game in Omaha. For Bethel, this is their second. A four-point victory last night over the Eagles of Texas A&M, Texarkana. Drive here from Uzan. Kick inside. They tried to find the cutter. Couldn't do it. Now Ertz. And it's going to be an offensive foul. Zacchaeus Darko Kelly gets there in time and takes it through the chest. Well works right down the middle, taking that contact full on down the gut. Excellent job there. The timing of it was very, very close, but the officials ruled an offensive foul, and I will take it because that was an excellent effort there by Zacchaeus Darko Kelly to get back in time for that play. It looked like Ertz might try to do a little Euro step to get over the top, but instead 
Darko Kelly in position, takes that one. As two former big men up here in the broadcasting booth, we love it whenever somebody gets their feet set, takes the charge down in the paint. Gotta love a good charge. That's that's the little bit of old school basketball that I still have in me, but I will always love a good charge. Can't have more respect for a player that's willing to take one through a chest for a team. Wonder if the coaching staff has the same rule I had growing up. You get the charge, you get the Gatorade, but they get the three here. 37-29 with 60 seconds to go. J.F. Daho with his first contribution of the game. Three points there, up back to eight. Bethel needs a basket here, under a minute to go. 50 seconds on the clock. Griffith on the wing, back to Cruz, contested three. Yes! That is the answer that they needed. 45 on the clock. What can Darko Kelly do back? Cruz and Darko Kelly, two of the best NAI players in the entire land. And there's Cruz. Here comes Darko Kelly. What's going to happen? Behind the back pass. Griffith with the slam. 30 seconds left. And Griffith with the exclamation point. Oh, my goodness. Off the tracks. Train coming through. What a pass. What a dunk. Shot clock dead. Three-point advantage for the Argonauts. And the ball. You know who's going to shoot this one. More than likely the guy with the basketball. Zacchaeus Darko. Kelly going one-on-one. -on -one. Step back. Three. No good. It's going to be one. Daho is out of bounds with .4 on the clock. What a finish to the half for the Pilots. I'd look at the board if I was the official. See if we can maybe add a little bit of time left on the clock. This is going to be... And throws it up. That one's going to yeah. miss short, but we will go into halftime with a little bit better of a game than we saw with a minute left. One possession is the deficit. 37-34. Providence on top of Bethel. We are going to take a quick halftime break and come back with some quick halftime analysis as well as the second half of action in about 15 minutes. For Matt Kirkle and Owen Goberson, we'll see you in a moment. Diverse and inclusive involvement opportunities are abundant at Clark University. Discover your perfect fit in one of our 20 plus student clubs and organizations or one of our 21 athletic teams. Here we are a family. We are one Clark, one community. At Clark University, we offer a variety of majors and minors to help you in your academic journey. Tap into your subconscious and consider what you love to do, what you are drawn to do, and what you excel at. Here, we are a family. We are one Clark, one community. Diverse and inclusive involvement opportunities are abundant at Clark University. Discover your perfect fit in one of our 20 plus student clubs and organizations or one of our 21 athletic teams. Here we are a family. We are one Clark, one community.
And if you didn't get enough of that first half, don't worry. We got 20 more minutes in front of us. 37-34, Providence on top of Bethel after one half of action. And that was a half that Bethel, in terms of shooting from the floor, they don't want to remember it. They were 30% from the field, but the surge that they had late in that half got them back within a possession. If you're Bethel, like you said, you have to be thanking your lucky stars that you're still in this game. Yeah, absolutely. They, uh, they are lucky they are still in this contest, and it's not because of anything they're really doing defensively. It's just Providence has not been able to put them to the sword. The Argonauts have got to be frustrated with themselves for not putting this one to bed in that first half, or at least giving themselves a little bit more daylight. It's only, like you said, a one possession ball game with how abysmal the shooting was from the Pilots in the first 20 or so minutes of that game. But you've also, something that might go underneath the radar, at least I'm not gonna let it go under the radar, is one of their top big men down low, Jackson Hashley. Three fouls already at halftime. That's got to play into your mind as you go into the second 20 minutes. That might give Bethel the opportunity to get it low into the paint and either force the foul and get one of their big men fouled out or easy points because he's hesitant to commit. It'll be interesting to see if we even see him to start the half. He might honestly spend the first five or 10 minutes on the bench. You need him late in the game and if that means sacrificing the first five or 10 minutes, that means that that's what you have to do. So we will see what his status is coming out of halftime. We have about a minute till we get the second half started. Now, Owen, what are some of the things you're looking to see specifically? Let's start with Bethel to get back in this game really quickly. Well, with Bethel, I think they should get it down low into the paint more often. Uh, Janai Griffith, I, I think, is going to have a really big second half here to maybe propel them to the next round if they are to go through. It's going to be through the big Englishman. However, looking at it from the flip side from the Argonauts, you have got to get the three-point ball going and just start building on this lead and pushing Bethel down the pecking order. And that starts with Zacchaeus Darko Kelly, nine points, 12 first half rebounds. That man is a menace out there. Averages nine on the season at 12 in the opening half on pace for probably a career day on the boards. Two-time Frontier Player of the Year, first team all Frontier, has had six 20-point games all before February 13th. 11th in defensive rebounds per game, 15th in assists per game, 29th in rebounds per game. Ladies and gentlemen, that's all nationally. This man is one of the best to do it in the NAI, and the man standing across from him, Travion Cruz, is into the same title of names. Both of them among the best in the country, trying to lift their team to Kansas City to face off in the round of 16, Bethel is going to get the ball to start this half, specifically Travion Cruz going up against Uzan. Looking to get it over the top inside, they flip it across and it's tipped out of bounds. Marcus Thompson doing a good job getting back on defense from help side. Important note to mention, Jackson Hashley in the game to start the half. Yeah, that's going to be something to look at, especially with him guarding Janai Griffith, who I said is going to have a big second half of action if the big Englishman is going to have a big second half. Jackson Hashley might either have to go to the bench in foul trouble or foul out. They need to try to get it there and another tip out of bounds. Eight on the shot clock, twice already in this possession. Providence able to get their hands in the passing lane and tip it out of bounds. They have to expect them to start trying to work it into Griffith, knowing that they have a weak link inside with three fouls. You get him with four, you're not gonna see much of Hashley the rest of the game. Drive from Burst, tough jumper foul on the play. That's going to be Dawson picking that one up. Dawson Fowler, three points, two rebounds, and an assist in this one. Picks up the foul there. That's going to be, I believe, his second. Looks like after the update, it's going to be his third. So now two players for the Argos with three fouls now in the opening minute of the half. Burst cannot capitalize on the free throw. Unfortunate miss there. They needed that one to bring it back within two. But it's been a good performance so far in the first half, especially on the glass for Burst. Not a, the ideal from the floor. But grab three rebounds, gets the second one to go at least. 37-35. First team on the board in the second half is the Pilots. Who's on one of the three there. Now he wants it again, denies. Tries to turn the corner into the short corner is Hashley. 
Wanted the shot a few times, now gonna back down Griffith. Has to be careful here. Tries to go up and under nothing, doing nine on the shot clock. Out to Darko Kelly, he almost gets it stripped. Ertz guarding. Three on the way. That one off the back iron, no good. It's Jared DeHart. The Trafalgar Indiana native. Comes off a screen. Kicks out opposite, it's Darko Kelly with the steal. Burst is the only one back. The Euro step layup, nice finish there. Out to a four point lead again, and now a double double for Darko Kelly. 11 points, 12 rebounds. Thought he was going to get that double double in the first half. He just went a little bit cold in the final stages of the first frame. DeHart with it. You look at the defense right now, Uzan on Cruz. He is hugging him right now, not letting him get any room to work. But now Griffith inside. Layup up, no good. Just a tough angle to try to get that one off the glass. Almost found a way to make it fall, though. 18-20 left in the second half. Uzan trying to get a screen from Ashley. He pulls the trigger. That one no good. It's going to be tipped out, recovered by Marcus. And that's going to be a travel on the play. Marcus Stevens had an opportunity there, shuffled his feet on the fake. Not the best start for, Ar for the Argos. Trying to get some sort of rhythm here. Now coming back the other way is Cruz. Cruz pull up three. No good, the no pass cast does not find its way in the bottom of the net. Harris Williams with it, had a really good first half, nine points for him. And that's gonna be a foul on the floor before the bucket. Marcus Stevens had a good look at that one. Now from the floor, they're gonna take it out. It's gonna be Uzan inbounding. Uzan two of six from the floor. He's got four points. Now Granville gonna come in for DeHart. DeHart still trying to find his rhythm in this one. Has a lone three. Was able to get two assists along with four rebounds. But just not really much going from the floor. Out to Harris Williams, three. No. Both teams struggling to get the lid off the rim in the first three minutes. Cruz. Off a screen, gets it out to Ertz. Three, no good. It's ran down by Hashley. Now Providence slow to bring it up the floor. Trying to see if they can get a good look right away. 39-35, 17-20 left, Euro step bucket there for Cap Uzan. Six points in that one, was just patient. Excellent move there, screen from Burst. Cruz still trying to find a rhythm. Granville drives, tries to split defenders, layup no good, but the foul on the floor. Kind of a tough move to make through defenders, but somehow was able to squeeze through them. Yeah, just shifty in between, getting in maybe even the tightest of gaps to squeeze through, but he did so there. With that last bucket from Uzan, it's a 41-35 lead. Bethel really still struggling to get the ball in the basket. 27% from the floor, 22% from three. Just struggling to find ways to score. It's Ertz looking to end this run. Cruz with it inside. Bounce pass. Pump fake. Bucket. Good. Nick Pluta. His first basket from the floor. He's got four points. 41-37. It's back to four. 16-50. Foul on the floor. That's going to go against Granville. Trying to defend Davian Harris-Williams. Williams, four of eight from the floor and has had himself a great start to this game. The Tacoma native is showing out here in Omaha. Matt Kirkle, Owen Godberson here live with you at the DJ Sokol Arena. It's been a good one so far if you've just tuned in. Into the block, Hashley goes to work. Dribbles towards the middle. Floater no good off the mark. Can he run it down? Cruz able to tap it out before. Nice job in transition defense. Bucket up, bucket in. Cruz with a nice addition to the score total there. Brings it to a possession. 41-39. Darko Kelly hasn't had the ball much here in the second half. Looking to go to work. Harris Williams. Crossover on Granville. The three no good. Almost put together the highlight play, but nonetheless... A pretty big crossover there. The second attempt, no good. And an offensive foul on Zacharias Darko Kelly. Excuse me, Zacchaeus. 
tough play there, but still the performance that Darko Kelly has put on cannot be overstated. Yeah, Darko Kelly just a little bit too overzealous there after two missed easy shots that would have not only given them a two possession lead, but would have given them a lot of momentum. And Harris Williams on that last possession, putting Granville on the deck. It was a nice crossover. Bit of an ankle breaker, couldn't finish the bucket. Now Cruz, short corner jumper on the other end, gets it to go. We are tied at 41. Just over 15 to play. Darko Kelly going to work. Uzan had a nice bucket earlier. Gets a screen from Olsen. Gets it into Jake Olsen, who's working on Pluta. Right-handed hook, that one off the iron, misses on the left side. A chance for Bethel to take the lead. Wire to wire. It's been Argonauts. Now a chance for the Pilots to take the lead, and they do. 43-41. Pilots on top. A trip to Kansas City on the line. And who else would have gotten that one to fall besides Travion Cruz? Time out on the floor. Wow. What a game we have here in Omaha. What a game indeed. It has been a fantastic start to the second half. Bethel on top, full timeout. We will take a break with them. We'll be back in a moment. Diverse and inclusive involvement opportunities are abundant at Clark University. Discover your perfect fit in one of our 20 plus student clubs and organizations or one of our 21 athletic teams. Here we are a family. We are one Clark, one community. At Clark University, we offer a variety of majors and minors to help you in your academic journey. Tap into your subconscious and consider what you love to do, what you are drawn to do, and what you excel at. Here, we are a family. We are one Clark, one community. Back with you at the DJ Sokol Arena here in Omaha, Nebraska. Before the timeout, the Jackson Community College transfer from Fort Wayne, Indiana, Travion Cruz. Back-to-back -back jumpers to lift Bethel on top for their first lead of the game. You have to love the effort we've seen from the pilots here to start the second half. Yeah, it's really easy when you're... It seems like you have a lid on top of your rim not being able to get in. It's easy to become dejected, demoralized, and not necessarily give up, but let the moment get to you and let that kind of negative energy fill the bench and fill the team. Not so today with the Pilots. They have been phenomenal in their response, and they've been helped by a Providence side who has gone cold. Yeah, Harris Williams now experiencing a little bit of the same troubles with the lid on the rim. Out of bounds off of, I believe it was Granville. Harris Williams turns a mistake into some fortune. Gets a turnover on the... Possession there after missing the layup on the other end. And it's been a nice performance from him thus far as well. And Bethel, that's only their sixth turnover of the game compared to Providence's 10. It's a rare mistake you'll see. And it's the leveling factor in a game where Bethel has not shot it well. Foul on the play is going to send Marcus Stevens to the free throw line. The 6'3 junior guard from Hilltop, Washington. A Sheridan Community College transfer this year has been ecstatic. 15 points a game, four rebounds, two assists a game, 41% from the floor, and the newcomer of the year in the Frontier Conference. Gets the first free throw to go. He's an 85% free throw shooter, that's second on the team, only to Darko Kelly. Gone over 20 points six times this season. He's only been in single digits three times. Just to give you a bit of an idea of what kind of scoring threat he brings, gets both to go and locks the game at 43. 14 40 to go. Cruz to the heart. That one's tipped. And possession gonna stay here. Stevens on the other end almost makes something happen. 43 43 inbound coming from the sideline, and it's to heart. Still a struggle for both DeHart and Burst in this one. DeHart one of six, Burst one of five. There were two players that really lit up the floor yesterday and lifted them over the Eagles of Texas A&M. Texarkana behind the back pass, almost a highlight finish there. Could not get the layup to go. 
Game still tied. It's Stevens. We've seen a couple of those today, those almost highlight reels. Everything right barring the finish. And this is one of those players who almost had it. This time gets the layup to go. 11 points for Harris Williams. He's on a roll now. 45-43, Providence back on top. And Cruz falls over, loose ball. Tries to get it out, it's loose again. And it's gonna be recovered now. Darko Kelly, two on two with Harris Williams. Gets it down the middle, it's Stevens. And that one's a foul on Burst. I don't know how I feel about that one. Burst had, looked like, at least to me, he had his hands straight up on that play. Yeah, it didn't really look like a whole lot. Not a lot in that call. I would give it a 50-50 call, though. I understand why they would call it. Yeah, definitely a lot of contact. I feel like most of it initiated by Stevens. But he ends up back at the free throw line here. In his last game in the conference championship for the Frontier Conference, was one of his only three games in single digits. And he's been 17% from the floor in the last two games. So Marcus Stevens, despite the season he's had, struggled a bit over the last few games. Right now, just one of five. So some of those struggles still continuing. But from the stripe, he's been effective. 46-43 Providence. Second free throw, good. Out to a four-point Argonaut lead. DeHart's gonna get us started on the other end. Granville, working on Harris Williams. Kinda just resetting here over on the right wing is Ertz into the other block is Cruz, foul, and one finish! Travion Cruz! That is an All-American play. Posting up on the opposite block, creating enough space for the entry pass and the finish. Javion, one man wrecking crew. Cruz, what a move inside. 18 points for Cruz. Eight of 17 from the floor. From the three-point line, it's a different story. One of seven. But he's still able to make it work already with more points than he had last night. He's got 19 creeping up on his season average. But more importantly, Bethel back within one. Nice little step back from Harris Williams. That one almost banked in. And there's Jake Olsen almost corralling it, but giving it to Granville. Granville the other way. He loses it right back. It's Harris Williams up the floor. Marcus Stevens. And he's going to easily lay this one in back to three. Those are the mistakes that are going to bury you at the end of the day. Yeah, turnovers are going to kill you at this level, especially with a team as explosive as the Argonauts. They see that mistake. They capitalize on that mistake. And again, Cruz posting up inside the patient pump fake in the bucket. That is leadership at its finest. The senior guard doing it all right now. He has come to life in the second half, has a game high 21. He's back to 50% from the floor, nine of 18. Here's Stevens, gets in the middle of the lane. Nice defense from DeHart, doesn't matter. Stevens with the answer, and we're gonna get a timeout here. And it's a full one, so we will take a break with them. 51-48, Providence with a three-point lead after the bucket from Stevens. We'll be back after a quick break. Diverse and inclusive involvement opportunities are abundant at Clark University. Discover your perfect fit in one of our 20 plus student clubs and organizations or one of our 21 athletic teams. Here we are a family. We are one Clark, one community. Because no two sports related injuries are alike, our sports medicine team is made up of people from all medical backgrounds covering a variety of specialties. We work together to create a treatment plan customized to your individual injury. We understand that activity is not limited by age, gender, or skill level. And we offer care that is tailored to you. Sports injuries can happen to anyone, whether you're a weekend warrior or an elite athlete. And we'll be here for you when you need us. We treat a variety of injuries, ranging from ankle sprains to ACL tears to shoulder dislocations. Our goal is to help you recover to your maximum potential. Whether you're on the field, in the gym, or in your own backyard, our treatment and rehabilitation plans will get you back to your peak performance. Trust our team with your sports medicine needs. Game on. Back with you live in Omaha, Nebraska, DJ Sokol Arena, where we have a barn burner on our hands. 51-48 the score. Providence on top with a trip to Kansas City 
and the round of 16 on the line here at the NAIA National Tournament. Opening round coverage here on Strive Sports brought to you by the Omaha Sports Commission. Matt Kirkle, Owen Godverson with you here. Foul on the play out of the timeout. That was Capuzan picking up the foul. He's had a good game so far. Six points for him, but unfortunate foul for Uzen. Only his second foul of the night. Crossover, pull up, jumper, Cruz again, no good. Trying to put the team on his back right now. Been the bulk of the shot attempts we've seen, but he's also have a game high of 21. 13 rebounds by Zagayas, Darko Kelly. But more importantly, Darko Kelly only with two points and zero rebounds so far in this half. Darko Kelly has been silenced so far by the Pilots. He just picked one up though. First action we've seen from him really on the glass so far. Great pass out to Stevens, yes! Jackson Hashley deserves all the credit for that bucket. The double team came from the backside of him. He felt it coming and got it out for an open three. That is awareness right there. Hand off here to Cruz. Nice patience, feeling out the backside help. Drive from Ertz. Spin, right-handed layup good. Nice response after the few buckets out of the timeout from the Argonauts. Stevens gonna bring things up here. Guarded by Granville. Harris Williams gonna pull one from deep. Long distance call. Have yourself a day, Davian Harris Williams. 14 points, his second tray of the night. That is a big man for a six foot guard. And he is playing like it today. Foul on the floor. Not sure who that was on, but I do not believe it was on Hashley. And it was. That's going to be his fourth. He's going to come out of the game. That's a huge one we talked about being in existence. And now with 11 minutes left, it becomes a game of how long do you keep him on the bench? Yeah, after a while, you got to realize he's one of your better big men, if not your best big man. So he has to be out there if you can. But you also don't want him to foul out. But it's also the last game of the season, potentially. Darko Kelly up the floor and a block on the other end. I believe he got a finger on it. There's Olsen recovering. That was a great cleanup job by Jake Olsen. The layup missed, but now they get a fresh shot clock. Drive here, nice dump, it's Olsen, and one finish! Jake Olsen gives them a nine point lead, a chance for 10. This game has been close most of the second half, and we saw a run from Travion Cruz and the Pilots, but right now, it's been the Argonauts since the last time out, and they have gotten their lead just about to double digits. It's only the second foul in the night for Janai Griffith. And Jake Olsen on the season, just 6.9 points per game. Free throw no good. An 80% free throw shooter regardless. Here's Cruz, down nine. He's double teamed, they poke it out. That was a nice job by Stevens. DeHart able to recover. DeHart almost double teamed, able to get out of it. 15 on the shot clock. Screen from Burst, there's Stevens again. The defense from the Argos really amping up the pressure. Can Cruz get one on Harris Williams? No, off the back iron, but there's Griffith. And just a tough look there. It looked like he was trying to pass it and he's complaining, thought there was some contact there. Harris Williams telling his team to slow down here. 10-10 left in the contest. And for the Argos, the way it stands, 10-10 away from heading to Kansas City. Their first game in the Omaha Regional. Bethel with a four-point win last night. Can they make it two? Stevens trying to go one-on-one -on -one against Edwards. Jumper, no good. Nice rebound from Griffith. Deny Griffith has had a good day on the glass especially. And that's going to be a foul on the play right before DeHart makes a three. And that would have been a nice one for him to finally see go in. Still only one made three-pointer for the ace. And that came really early in the first half. Yeah, he has been cold today. And like you said, where he goes, the team goes. And he has been cold. And thus, the team has been fairly cold from the field and from beyond the arc. Only shooting 22% from beyond. Free throw opportunities for DeHart on the foul. Already in the bonus, Bethel. Seven team fouls for Providence. First free throw good. This is almost a benefit for Bethel because from the stripe, they've been great tonight, 85%. If they can get more looks from the stripe, it might help them get easy buckets as the heart sinks both. You gotta, gotta take the chances when they come your way. So if you get to the free throw line, you have got to sink both of them. 
Here comes Darko Kelly. Been very quiet so far in the second half. Catches on the left wing. Gets to Harris Williams. Clearing out. Trying to go one-on-one. -on -one. Step back. Gets Edwards away from the play. You've got to be kidding me. What a play. He skips back with a little bit of finesse. He's celebrating out there, having a good time. Ten-point lead for the Argos. Oh, as Janai Griffith would begrudgingly admit, that is cheeky. DeHart with the answer. And a timeout coming from Bethel. As now there's a bit of complaints coming from the head coach trying to talk to the officials. Not sure what he's complaining about. I think it was the collision on that last play from Griffith. Yeah, there was a high forearm. Looked like it just caught somebody in the jaw. Not sure who took it on the way down. But the officials complaining after that three was made. Nothing to do now. And a seven-point game. But talk about the leadership from the six-foot junior guard, Jared DeHart. They get a big three in their face. You see him skipping down the floor, Harris Williams. He's having fun. He's having a good time trying to rub it in your face. And what does DeHart do on the other end? Silences him. Hits a three right back in their face. Gets it to a seven-point game. And all of a sudden, things are interesting right after it looked like it was going to get ugly. Yeah, that is... That, that's calm. That's composure. And like you said, that is leadership right there. Just an unbelievable play. I don't mind the skip, though, from Harris I love Williams. It. I love every single bit of that. At the end of the day, basketball and sports in general, they're fun. Have, Have fun. fun with it. Have fun out there. You, oh. hit, you hit a step back jumper for three in somebody's eyeball, I'd be skipping like a daisy Absolutely. all the way back. I feel the same way about it. I always think that nowadays. It's a game. If if I'm guarding somebody and they score on me, I'm gonna. I'm, I'm okay with them celebrating. You but earned it. They earned as it. As long as you earn it. You. That's that's my biggest thing in sports. You can talk as much ish as you want. If you can back it up, fair play. Fair enough. Owen, I, ca I can't say it. Owen Godverson with the words of wisdom here from Sokol Arena, but it was a big response from DeHart after the celebration. You act like I speak anything other than words of wisdom. Oh, you do. All the time. Very frequently, actually. But that's why you're here in the booth with me is because you have wisdom about basketball, and we are here back at DJ Sokol Arena. We are getting back to the action after the DeHart silencing bomb from three. It's Stevens. Gets it into Darko Kelly. Has yet to have a point in the second half. That one also no good, but there's Stevens. He's had a great game and now a big three-point opportunity. That one no good from Stocks and we are going the other way. Darko Kelly picks up the foul there. That's his second. Darko Kelly has had a very quiet second half and frankly, they haven't been trying to get him involved in the way, and the foul actually not on Darko Kelly, but regardless, we have yet to see them really try to get him involved on the offensive end. No, I think they're realizing that it might just be a cold second half from him to start, and they're not forcing anything to him to try to break that. And DeHart misses the free throw, but there's Griffith fighting for it, loose ball, and here's Stocks. Rasheed Stocks with it, and now they're gonna slow things down, work the clock, approaching the eight minute mark, seven point lead for the Argos nice hesitation gets to the hoop and that was definitely on Griffith in midair you saw his arms kind of come down that's not a good foul but still a lot of time as that's going to be number three for Griffith and now we're going to see Nick Pluto walk over to the scores table knowing he's going to be going in the game for Griffith Griffith definitely upset about that one you can see him kind of rubbing his jersey over his face hands on his waist Free throw good there. And here comes Hashley on four fouls on the night. Back in at the middle post on the left. And that's a big development. Somebody, I mean, obviously in foul trouble already, but 8.37's a lot of time. If I would have asked you when we saw him go out at about the 11-minute mark, when we would see him again, I would have bet it would have been around the five-minute mark. The fact that he's coming in three minutes and 30 seconds before that, is pretty significant. He's got to play smart in the game. Going up against Nick Pluta now with Griffith on the bench. Here comes Cruz. 64-55, Argos on top. Trying to get some sort of opportunity here. Cruz gets a screen. Loose ball. Nice job by Dawson Fowler. And it's going to be a steal recovered by Ashley. Ashley 
First person into that scrum. Risky there. No way. Oh. He wanted that one from distance. Dawson Fowler has had a really quiet, good game. Only one shot from the floor. He's got three points now. Cruz for three. Yes. Big time answer from Cruz. And we are going to get a timeout here. And it's going to be, I believe, a full timeout. But I'm not quite sure. It's going to be a 30-second. So we will stay here through the 30-second timeout. 64-58 every time they get to a position where you start to think Providence might close the door. Who opens it right back up? Travion Cruz hits a huge three from the top of the key. He's got 24 on the game. What a day it's been for Cruz after what we saw yesterday. Yeah, 10 of 21 from the floor. Two for eight from beyond the arc. 24 points. Only three rebounds and four assists. Nowhere near a double-double yet. Still a little bit of time left in this game for him to get into that stat column. But what a performance to keep the Pilots in the air and keep the Pilots at the tournament. The six-foot senior guard has been big in a game where nobody else in double figures. Two players with eight. That's Ertz and DeHart. No other player with more than eight besides Cruz with 24. On the other end, three players for Providence in double figures. Davian Harris-Williams with 17. Marcus Stevens with 16 and Darko Kelly with 14, excuse me, 11 on 14 shot attempts. And it hasn't really mattered that one of the NAI's best only has 11 because the rest of his team has gotten the job done. Dawson Fowler's had a good game so far. Enters it into Hashley. And one from Jackson Hashley. Have yourself a day, big fella. I love the aggression, especially with four fouls. Yeah, he went in there and he was fearless of the contact he even wanted the contact you saw it after that hit the bottom of the net Ashley at the free throw line not a great free throw shooter on the season and that one off the mark here we go the other way it's Cruz into the lane a lot of traffic gets it out to DeHart Cruz baseline drive gets around Fowler that one no good that was close to being Ashley's fifth He's able to avoid it. And now a great way to create separation. Keeps the ball high and away. And the bucket for Davey and Harris-Williams. He's got a game high 19. Excuse me, a team high 19. He has been fantastic off the bench. It's why at the end of the year, the conference recognized him as one of the elite. And now Ertz with a drive and picks up the third foul. Excuse me, the second foul. For Zacchaeus Darko Kelly. Went up with a lot of contact there. Just trying desperately to hold the defense and keep this 10 point lead intact. But he sends Bethel to the charity stripe. And that's the first miss of the day from the free throw line for Ertz. Now six of seven. And a big opportunity to try to get back in this one down by 10. Still plenty of time left. We've seen them put together a lot of quick runs already in this game. Cuts it to nine with that one. Now Life Granville going to come back in, and he's coming in for DeHart. You wonder how long DeHart's going to be on the bench. They need their junior guard out there. And they need him sharp. They need him hitting threes. Now the man of the game for Providence. Harris Williams brings it up the floor. Over to Darko Kelly. Skip pass over to Stocks. Trying to get inside. Here comes a screen from Ashley. Harris Williams tries to find the roll man. Now bursts with it. In transition, Cruz creates enough space for the bucket. 68-61, 6.49 to go. That was the response that Bethel needed. Harris Williams off a screen, tries to turn the corner. Left-handed layup falls. The same style of layup he had last time, almost a Statue of Liberty. Gets that one to fall. Almost a carbon copy, too. And now Ertz finds a cut in Granville. Now over to an, and an offensive foul beforehand. It was Pluta getting in there off the cut. I wish Granville would have gone up with that initial look. Looked like it was a nice back cut, but for some reason kicked it out to the wing. Yeah, he should have taken it first time on that one. Tried to go up for it and get more points on the board. 70-61. to 61. Plenty of time if you're a Pilots fan. 6.25 left in the game. Both teams now going to be in the bonus from here on out. Darko Kelly will get us started on the other end. If you're just tuning in, it's been a fantastic game here from Omaha, Nebraska. 
DJ Sokol Arena, Matt Kirkle, Owen Godberson with you here. And Darko Kelly and one finish. There is what they needed. Has been very inactive this half, but gets a big one there. Yeah, got the chance to make it 14 points on the evening for one of the top players in the country. And he showed the quality there on the way through. Took all of the hit that he possibly could and got it to fall. That is class. First chance at the free throw line after the and one. 13 points, 13 rebounds. For Zacchaeus Darko Kelly, trying to send his team to Kansas City to compete in the round of 16 next week at the Municipal Auditorium. Darko Kelly sets up from the stripe and can't get it to go. So 11 points is the advantage. They advance up to DeHart. He wanted that. Now some ball movement here. It's Ertz, pump fake. Nice defense from Hashley, not picking up the fifth foul, but a nice job from Ertz recognizing that, using his fake, and getting the layup to go. Yeah, Hashley has been very smart ever since he's come back with that fourth foul on his resume tonight. Ertz understanding his defender, knowing that Hashley can't get aggressive. They should really try to get it more to Ertz in the paint, see what he can do. Stevens at the elbow, loses it, Cruz with the steal. Opportunity here, he's going up against Darko Kelly, puts him on his back, switches to the left side and gets the finish. That is a nice job, that is textbook point guard play, put your defender on your back with a simple one move, did that to perfection. Yeah, got the steal, got the quick pace down the floor for the transition points and Brings it back to seven points as we get a timeout. And a full one at that. 72-65 the score. Providence on top. We will take a quick break and come back in a moment. Diverse and inclusive involvement opportunities are abundant at Clark University. Discover your perfect fit in one of our 20 plus student clubs and organizations or one of our 21 athletic teams. Here we are a family. We are one Clark, one community. At Clark University, we offer a variety of majors and minors to help you in your academic journey. Tap into your subconscious and consider what you love to do, what you are drawn to do, and what you excel at. Here, we are a family. We are one Clark, one community. Omaha, Nebraska, the home of today's game here at DJ Sokol Arena. One team will advance to Kansas City. One team's season will come to an end. Right now, Providence on top, 72-65. After a few nice buckets from Travion Cruz. He's got 28 points in this one on 12 of 24. The last one was a steal and a breakaway bucket against Darko Kelly. Darko Kelly with 13 and 13 in this one. It's going to be Uzan starting this play. Quick ball movement now over to the left side. They're going to try to set a double to get Harris Williams open. He catches. Jabs right. Now gets a screen. Nice crossover trying to get around Granville. A little attempted dream shake. He goes up with the left hand. And when you can't miss, you can't miss. That's a great look there from Harris Williams. Oh, that is all the sauce in the world down in the paint around the free throw. Oh. Dirty. 23 points. Now for Davian Harris Williams. Pass inside is going to be stolen. And that is Hashley, but almost turns it over. Smart play there to recover it. Harris Williams now asking for a screen. He gets it. He's the hot hand right now. They're looking to try to play through him, but here is Stevens. Almost loses footing and then a travel off of the slip. Tough play there, lost his traction, tried to recover, but just going too fast to be able to recover when you slip that quickly. Yeah, he almost did the full splits. We were talking during the break about us starting up a yoga uh, session, and he, he might have needed one after that. He stretched pretty far. Yeah, that was definitely a play where as a player, when that happens, it definitely scares you a little bit as you're falling over, but luckily Steven's okay. The only thing bad came out, coming out of that is a travel. But now Cruz, yes! 
a three-pointer and a timeout and a full one. We will stay here through that timeout. 74-68 and quietly, it is very quietly, they are creeping back into this game. It keeps going back and forth from five back to 10. Right now, it's sitting at a six point game. What does Bethel have to do out of this timeout to kind of regroup and keep going and try to get back in this game? Yeah, they've got to get fired up. They've got to get the momentum on their side because like you, like we keep hitting home this weekend, basketball is a game of runs and right now they need to go on a big run with not a whole lot of time left. Still a decent amount of clock, 424 left on the clock, but with how good Providence has been, you need to get consistent stops and then you need to turn those stops into points down on the other end. 31 points for Travion Cruz in this one. That one brings it to six with 424 left in the game. Bethel has improved their shooting numbers tremendously in the second half. Now up to 42% as a team. Providence 45%. Both teams shooting about even from just about every aspect of the floor. In terms of the turnover battle, Providence with 14 to Bethel's 12. Bethel for the first portion of the game, turnovers were what were keeping a minute when they were shooting so poorly. They were able to first force more turnovers from the Argonauts. That kept a minute. Now with 424 left, it's gonna be Providence getting possession here. They're gonna have to go full length of the floor. Now we're starting to see a little bit of full court pressure here from Bethel. Inbound straight to half court. It's Ashley in the trap coming. He loses it. And a turnover. Huge opportunity for Bethel to potentially bring it back within a possession with a three. Here is that three. And he gets it. Travion Cruz. 34 points. 74-71. This is why you love March. Omaha, Nebraska. DJ Sokol Arena. Matt Kirkle, Owen Godberson here with you. We got a close one here in the NAI. First round action, a loose ball. It's gonna be recovered by Cruz. Back-to-back -back turnovers for Jackson Hashley. Cruz, here we go. He's got two threes in a row. Gets the top of the key to DeHart. Griffith running back and forth to set screens and that one gonna be a block. Looked like there may have been a bit of an arm extension, but the refs let it slide, and that's a big foul call that sends Ertz back to the free throw line. And Darko Kelly was pleading exactly that same case. He said the arm extension referee says, no, 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 not today. That's a block. Send him to the line. And that's free throw opportunity number nine coming up for Nathan Ertz. And out of nine, he's made eight. It's been a good day for Ertz so far, who's only two for seven from the floor. Still has 11 points and tacked on six boards. Free throw good there. Now back to one with less than three minutes and 30 seconds to play. Darko Kelly gets us started. Only two points here in the second half. Cross court pass. The man of the game with the ball in the corner. He's going to take a three. That one way off the mark, but there's Hashley making up for his previous two turnovers. Grabbing the offensive board. He's top 30 in the country in offensive rebounds per game. Tries to go up and under. It's the heart with the steal. He goes in transition. Will he slow down? He pulls up. He hits. He hits. Jared DeHart from three. Two point lead for the Pilots. Jared DeHart's going to give me a DeHart attack. Oh my goodness. Here comes Darko Kelly right back the other way. Oh my! Counter punch, haymaker, you name it. We got it here at the DJ Sokol Arena. One point lead for Providence. You throw a right hook, we'll throw a left jab. Oh ho ho! Settle in, folks. We've got a fun two and a half to go. Cruz wanted that one. Now to DeHart. DeHart with it. Oh boy. Hit a dagger in transition on the last possession. It's Cruz. Step back. Can he? Oh, my goodness. He can. Time out, Bethel. You wanted March basketball? You got it. 79-77. What a weekend for hoops in the state of Nebraska. Oh, my. The state championship just wrapped up in Lincoln and we have another title fight on our hands right now. Oh, this, this is beyond a title fight. This, 
I, I haven't seen a fight like this. Oh my, probably. Habib McGregor? 37 points for Travion Cruz. We saw a 38 point performance in the Dakota State game earlier. Travion Cruz must have seen it and said, I want some of that. Put some of that on my plate. What a game it's been so far for Bethel and what a comeback it's been. To go from how poor they started this game. Remember folks, at the after what, 12 minutes of the first half, they were shooting in the teens. Yes, the teens. Not just from three, from the field. It Providence have got to be kicking themselves. How have they not put this game to bed sooner? How has Bethel come back from this? And how on earth is this game going to finish? You know what's fantastic though, Owen? 217 remains in this game. I want more. I want more. Maybe we can get some free basketball, but you know, neither of these teams want that. They want to duke this out in regulation. 79, 77, Bethel on top. Cruz has been the man of the game. 15 of 27 from the floor and 37 points looking to drop a 40 bomb here tonight in Omaha. It's going to be inbounded. Now a full court trap. They're going to see if they can get it going here. And they have to stop the clock to make sure the music gets shut off here. Get the music going. That just adds to the atmosphere, I think. You know what? Typically, I would disagree. But right now, given the situation, I feel like it would definitely fit the scenario that we're dealing with. No lyrics, just beat. Just beat. Instrumentals only. The officials disagree with us, unfortunately. And that's why we're not on the floor. But now we're going to get another look here from Providence. No stripes on these suits up here. Just clean navy blue and black. Nice ties and everything. We're looking the part. Let's see if Providence can play the part. They give it up the floor. Almost loses it, and he's able to recover. That could have been huge. Who's on? From a screen from Ashley. Now they get it in to Jackson Ashley. Kicks it out. Darko Kelly trapped. A lot of contact. Turnover. And now almost a strip on the other end. And there's Darko Kelly. Getting the turnover. Anticipated that pass well. No numbers here, but they still take the three. That one no good. Nice box out there from Jared DeHart. That was a heat check from Davian Harris-Williams. The team high, 23 points. He wanted that one to go. I wanted that one to go just for the pure excitement. Cruz now getting backed off by Stevens. 130 remains, ladies and gentlemen. One team goes to Kansas City. One team season gets put to rest. Cruz going one-on-one -on -one with Stevens. Step back. Three. No good. Tried to take the air out of the Argos. But here comes Darko Kelly the other way. Drive. Layup. No. Nice defense from the UK native. Here comes Cruz. I haven't seen a He's Brit defend like that since Rio Ferdinand retired. And now a loose ball. Both teams just wanting March to keep going. And now they have to separate people at the bottom of the pile. It's Harris, Williams, and Griffith. And they're going to rule a jump ball. No fouls issued on the play. Possession stays with Bethel, I believe. And the mob broke, too. What more can you ask for today? 53 seconds left in this contest. 79, 77, and they will issue a foul on the play. I believe that was Cruz who picked it up. This is going to be good, ladies and gentlemen. I recommend while this floor is being mopped up, go get a drink of water, sit down, catch your breath, maybe send a text to a relative, tell them you love them, do something positive, then get back to the TV. Because we have 53.3 left, and Bethel is trying to advance to Kansas City while the Argos are avoiding this blown lead that they once had. They get a chance here. It's Stevens going to start it off. Spin move. Avoids the heart, and they're going to take a timeout, and they wanted to travel before that timeout. I don't think they're going to give it to them. And it's going to be a full timeout. We will take a break with them. 79-77. This is your chance to regroup, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be back in a moment. Because no two sports-related injuries are alike, our sports medicine team is made up of people from all medical backgrounds covering a variety of specialties. We work together to create a treatment plan customized to your individual injury. We understand that activity is not limited by age, gender, or skill level. And we offer care that is tailored to you. 
Sports injuries can happen to anyone, whether you're a weekend warrior or an elite athlete, and we'll be here for you when you need us. We treat a variety of injuries, ranging from ankle sprains to ACL tears to shoulder dislocations. Our goal is to help you recover to your maximum potential. Whether you're on the field, in the gym, or in your own backyard, our treatment and rehabilitation plans will get you back to your peak performance. Trust our team with your sports medicine needs. Game on. Omaha, Nebraska is the site for this title fight that we have here. Kansas City is the destination for the winner. The loser's season will come to an end. Both teams laying everything out on the floor. It's been a battle back and forth. But we have 50 seconds left and a two point lead for Bethel, but the Argos with the chance to tie or take the lead here. 27 on the shot clock, 50 on the game clock. Here we go. Something that needs to be mentioned, Bethel also has a man in foul trouble. Burst with four. Burst currently not on the floor. We're wondering if we will see him again in this one. It's gonna be a handoff, Darko Kelly across court. Harris Williams inside, it's gonna be an and one from Marcus Stevens. He flexes to the bench as they tie the game with 43 seconds left. What a play. The ball movement was excellent on that play from the Argos and they were able to catch the backside sleeping. Free throw on the way. I will take your two and I'd like another, please and thank you. We'll see if Stevens can get it here. And he doesn't. We remain deadlocked at 79. 40 seconds remain in this contest. The last one in Omaha. Travion Cruz kicks it to the outside. Not want to lob over to Ertz. DeHart, 30 on the clock. 12 seconds separate shot and game clock. It's going to be Cruz, the man of the hour. 37 points. Into the lane. Out to DeHart. Three on the way. Yes! Jared DeHart. 18 seconds left. A three-point lead for the Pilots. I think ice is running through that man's veins. Oh! DeHart from the corner puts the dagger and puts the pressure on Providence. 82-79, Owen. What do the Argos do out of this timeout? Now down three, only 18 seconds left. Jared DeHart has been fairly absent for most of the night. Now four for seven from three, he hits the dagger. How do you mentally respond out of this timeout? I know, That's I know. That's tough. That is tough to do out of this timeout because that from DeHart, he had the cloak on the rest of the game. He brought it off and put the dagger on late. I think what you gotta do is just slow the tempo down just a little bit. There's no shot clock. You can hold for less. You've just gotta find one opportunity. And if I could get it to absolutely anybody out there on the floor, it's Davian Harris Williams. 10 for 20 on the day. Three for nine from beyond the arc and 23 points. He's the hot hand. You've gotta feed the hot hand. Gotta feed the hot hand. That's kinda what I'm thinking too. You have to feed the guy that's giving you the most production tonight. And that has been this co-sixth man of the year. Inside the Frontier Conference, Davian Harris-Williams, the six-foot junior guard from Tacoma, Washington. Plenty of threats on this Argos team. We are going to find out who will get the shot to try to lock this game back up at 82. Don't need a three-pointer. That's what all broadcasters say in this situation, but you don't. You can get a quick one and play defense. Into Darko Kelly. Guarded by Ayers. Screen coming. He rejects, gets to the hoop, easy layup. 11.2 and a timeout comes this way. You figured they would try something like that. And defensively, you can't do much more than that because the last thing you want is to send Providence to the line with a make to potentially tie the game. So it's unfortunate. It doesn't take a lot of time off the clock and the pressure still remains on Bethel. But we are in a situation where if you're Bethel, not much more you can do defensively. No, absolutely not. You can't defend that as they go all the way through. And you said it perfectly. You cannot send them to the free throw line because both teams so far have been pretty solid from the free throw line, but 81% from the charity stripe for the Pilots. You send them to the line, that's giving them another two points that you just got. And we're gonna see more than likely a foul the second after we get an inbound. Neither team with any timeouts remaining. So we are going to play it out from here. Dude, this is the last time the coaches will speak to their players before their destiny is decided. 
who will end up in Kansas City to play in the round of 16 in the NAI National Tournament. In 11.2 seconds of game clock, we will know the answer. Inbound, coming from Ertz. They get it in. It's to Hart, he's fouled from behind. He's gonna go to the stripe here. 9.8 seconds to go, and these are two of the biggest free throws of the season for DeHart. You make two, you go up three, and then you gotta play defense. And the same situation as yesterday, you wonder if you try to foul right away, because obviously in the double bonus, both teams, if he makes both free throws here, and you go up three, you foul, you force him to the line. The worst you can do is still be up one when the play's over, but then the free throw doesn't go. That completely changes the game plan. DeHart hit the three. That was the dagger. Misses the free throw there. Needs this to go up two. Hits that one. Gives them a little bit of life. Here we go. No timeouts. Here we go. It's Stevens at the three-point line. Loses it. It's off of Stevens. It's a turnover. Bethel is going to escape. They're gonna advance to Kansas City. They still need free throws, but 4.5, it's gonna be tough. It's oh. gonna be Ertz inbounding here. Cruz calling for help. That is heartbreaking for Providence. And they get it in, Cruz able to get around a defender. Can he hold him off? And he's fouled with 2.4. Two free throws and Bethel punches their ticket to Kansas City. They've gotta hit him though. One make. And the door is open for the Argonauts. Two makes, and that will do it. 37 points for the senior. Make it 38. Nothing but net. Moments like this don't phase him. It's why he's the conference's best and one of the best in the country. 38 points, a chance to send him to Kansas City. And Bethel will advance to the round of 32, excuse me, the round of 16 in Kansas City. Bethel comes from behind, shoots phenomenally to Hart's three, ends up lifting him to victory. And we will see the Bethel Pilots in Kansas City at the Municipal Auditorium for the round of 16. What a dogfight we saw from the Pilots today, and you can see it on their faces. They are ecstatic. The Argonauts heartbroken. The Argo has been sunk in the Mediterranean and Bethel's on their way to Kansas City. 85-81 the final. That will do it here from Omaha, Nebraska and the DJ Sokol Arena. Ladies and gentlemen, that was March basketball at its finest and you received a large dose of it. Now Kansas City gets to take over. Bethel advances to Kansas City, 85-81 over Providence. Oh, and any last thoughts before we send these great folks home for a good night's sleep after a great eight games of action we've had over the last two days? This has been some of the greatest memories I could ever have of my basketball broadcasting career. Some fantastic basketball we've seen this weekend, and this is just the start. Round of 16 next. March Madness next week. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a beautiful time of the year of sports, and we would like to thank you all on behalf of the Omaha Sports Commission for letting myself and Matt Kirkle and everybody at Strive TV be a part of your March experience. And we thank you so much for tuning in over the last few days. That will do it for our coverage here on Strive Sports as the Bethel Pilots punch their ticket to Kansas City. For myself and Owen Godberson, we thank you so much for listening, and we will see you soon.